Dear students, this screencast video is pertaining to the nitrogen fixation that is question number 3 which also includes the nitrogen assimilation. First, we try to understand why nitrogen is important for a living organism. If you look at into the biomolecules or macromolecules of a, any living system, it will be composed of carbohydrate, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. So, these macromolecules are in turn made up of elements such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus and nitrogen. Say, nitrogen is an important element that is required for making of protein and nucleic acid. So, these are all serving as a building block for the whole living system. Nitrogen will be first incorporated there into amino acid. Amino acid will later forming into the protein of the living organism. Before going into the points related to nitrogen fixation, we will try to understand the definition for nitrogen assimilation. Nitrogen assimilation is formation of organic nitrogen compounds, especially amino acids from inorganic nitrogen compounds that have been present in the environment. Organisms like plant, fungi and certain bacteria that is those bacteria that cannot be able to fix nitrogen. Some bacteria can able to fix nitrogen and that particular nitrogen could be assimilated. Those details we see later. But certain bacteria cannot be able to fix nitrogen. Plants and fungi generally assimilate nitrogen in the form of nitrate or ammonia. So, if you look at that into this diagram, you can able to understand how nitrate as well as ammonia are getting assimilated there into the living system by using certain enzymes such as a glutamine synthetase and glutamine oxoglutarate amino transferase. The details of the nitrogen assimilation we will see later. First, we will try to understand how nitrogen is fixed by certain groups of bacteria. These bacteria were referred as diazotropes. So, first we look at the points related to nitrogen fixation. It is also referred as biochemistry of nitrogen fixation. If we define this nitrogen fixation, it is referred as conversion of molecular atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogenous form that is ammonia through the intervention of certain bacterial or archaeal enzyme system which is referred as nitrogenase. That is nitrogen is converted into ammonia with the help of enzyme nitrogenase. And this process is referred technically as biological nitrogen fixation or BNF. And this kind of organisms are called as diazotropic organisms or diazotropes. If you look at into the nature, the biological nitrogen fixation process will accounts for about 100 to 140 teragrams that is 10 power 12 amount of nitrogen per year. That is this much amount of nitrogen has been fixed into ammonia by this diazotropic group of organisms. These organisms are broadly divided into four groups that is free living organisms, associative symbiotic organism, symbiotic organism and endophytic organism. Free living means they will be just living there in the environment freely and they may not be associated with any other organism. They are commonly referred as free living. Here aerobic free living example is azotobacter. And an anaerobic free living nitrogen fixing bacteria example is Clostridium pastorianum. Then associative symbiotic nitrogen fixer. Associative means this particular organism is having a association there with the other system. Say for example with the plant system. Example here is azospirillum that is found commonly associated there with the grasses. Then comes the symbiotic nitrogen fixation. There is a small difference there between symbiotic and associative. Symbiotic is a strictly in association there with the plant system. Associative they can find in association with plant system or sometimes they can be entirely free living also. In the symbiotic group of nitrogen fixation, there are two different types of nodule structures could be formed. You already have a Rhizobium is a kind of a nitrogen fixing organism found commonly in the pulse crops and they can able to form nodules. 
inside the nodules this rhizobium will be living and fixing the nitrogen so this is a perfectly symbiotic relationship that is it gets certain carbon uh, vitamins and other nutrients there from the plant system at the same time plant provides a shelter for the association of this rhizobium in turn plant gets the nitrogen that have been fixed by the rhizobium that is nitrogen is converted into ammonia that ammonia can be used up there by the plant system here two types of organism one is a rhizobium that is associated with the determined nodule another one is a franchia which is basically a actinobacteria it is found to present there in the nodules of alder plant the type of nodule formed is a non determined nodule this determined and non determined is based on the size of the nodule and the fourth group is endophytic organism these are the organism that have been present there inside the plant systems in the parenchyma cells or inside the xylem and phloem vessels sometime some kind of nitrogen fixing organism could be present an example for this is gluconacetobacter diazotropicus living in association with the sugarcane plants now we look at into the steps that have been involved there in the nitrogen fixation so in order to fix nitrogen the following is the overall reaction that is nitrogen in the presence of hydrogen that is split up and shown as a proton and electron and energy in the form of atp is required to convert nitrogen into ammonia molecule since nitrogen is a triple bonded molecule it requires a lot of energy to split the bonds and convert it into ammonia the same process could be mediated there in the industrial scale also which is referred technically as a haber boss process if you look at into the haber boss process nitrogen in the presence of hydrogen is converted into ammonia whereas you require a high temperature as well as a very high pressure and catalyst in the form of iron and ruthenium whereas if you look at into the biological nitrogen fixation the whole process is mediated at an ambient temperature that is at a 20 degree centigrade and a normal atmospheric pressure whereas the catalyst here required is a nitrogenous enzyme in the biological nitrogen fixation nitrogen is converted into ammonia at the same time some hydrogen will be evolved atp that have been used during the process is converted into adenosine diphosphate now we look at into the steps that have been involved there in the conversion of nitrogen into ammonia so this process will be mediated by an enzyme called as a nitrogenase this enzyme will be commonly present in bacteria and archaea this enzyme acts as a catalyst there in the conversion of nitrogen into ammonia for the functioning of the enzyme a lot of hydrogen molecule is required that has been taken there from the electron donors that includes nadh as well as fad so those electron donors will be donating their electrons there into ferridoxin and it will be channeled into the nitrogenase enzyme for the proper functioning of the nitrogenase enzyme energy is required that has been met out from the hydrolysis of the atp molecule this nitrogenase is a complex enzyme it composes of two different component the first component is referred as a dinitrogenase reductase and second one is referred as a dinitrogenase the properties of these two protein components of the nitrogenase can be seen there on the right hand side so this enzyme will start functioning when nitrogen is been available in a ample supply so nitrogen in the presence of the enzyme it will be converted into ammonia molecule so this reduction process takes place at the three steps say in the first step the triple bonded nitrogen is being converted into enzyme diamide in the second step again with the addition of the electron it is converted there into enzyme hydrazine that is with the nitrogenase enzyme the hydrazine form of a nitrogen has been associated there on on a final reduction step it has been finally converted into ammonia molecule ammonia molecule will have a very less affinity towards the nitrogenase enzyme so they will be just leaving out of the nitrogenase system on a entire operation of this process one molecule of nitrogen is converted into two molecule of ammonia with the help of nitrogenase enzyme that is functioning in the presence of energy 
and the electron donor. Now, we look at the characteristic features of the nitrogenase enzyme. As I already explained, it consists of two proteins. One is made up of molybdenum ion protein, which is referred as the dinitrogenase. And this is the exact enzyme protein in which the nitrogen will be binding. And the other one is referred as the ion protein. It is also called as a dinitrogenase reductase. Function of this protein component is to keep the dinitrogenase, that is the previously discussed enzyme component, always in a reduced state. Other characteristics of nitrogenase includes it can be highly sensitive to oxygen, that is oxygen can destroy this enzyme activity. It needs magnesium ion for its activeness. It has the property to convert ATP to ADP while functioning. It also has the ability to reduce the proton molecules into hydrogen when dinitrogen is present there. That is a substrate competition may be happening in which even proton can be reduced into hydrogen. The next important point is they do not have a high substrate specificity. This enzyme is regarded as a primitive enzyme. It reduces lot of other different kinds of triple bonded molecules which includes the cyanide ions, carbon monoxide and even the acetylene gas. And basis of the reduction of this acetylene gas only in the field of agriculture in order to quantify the amount of nitrogen fixed by an organism, they go for analyzing the acetylene reduction assay activity that is referred as a ARA activity. The temperature for the functioning of this enzyme will be around 20 to 30 degree centigrade and the age of the cells that can able to fix high amount of nitrogen are referred as a physiological youth state, it meaning logarithmic phase of the cells. Then the activities of this enzyme could be regulated by its own products, meaning that if ammonia is present in more amount, then the activity of the nitrogenase will be reduced. So, it has a feedback inhibition in the form of ammonia produced there. And the final point is on purification, this enzyme loses its activity and its functional mainly under the pH range of 6.5 to 7.5. Finally, we come to the part of the nitrogen assimilation. I have already explained at the beginning of this lecture. It is a formation of organic nitrogen compounds like amino acids from inorganic nitrogen compound present in the environments. Organism like plants, fungi and certain bacteria that cannot fix nitrogen gas will depend on ability to assimilate nitrate or ammonia for their needs. Animals will entirely depend on organic nitrogen that has been obtained from their food. So, this has been very clearly depicted there in this diagram. You can able to see nitrate at, as well as ammonia that have been assimilated there in a living system. So, these are the two forms of nitrogen that can be assimilated. So, in a non-nitrogen fixing bacteria, this nitrate as well as ammonia need to be taken from the environment with the help of special transporter proteins. Say, this is an ammonia transporting protein, this one is a nitrate transporting protein. They were involved in transporting the ammonia and nitrate inside the cell. In the interior of the cell, nitrate or ammoniacal forms will be further incorporated there into certain amino acids with the help of a series of enzymes which includes glutamine synthetase as well as glutamine oxoglutrate amino transferase. Now, we look at the steps that have been involved there in a diazotropic organism that is a nitrogen fixing organism. This organism converts nitrogen into ammonia. That ammonia gets incorporated into organic compound especially the alpha keta glutarate in the presence of NADH or NADPH. In both this reaction, it will be finally converted to glutamate molecule. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase. In the next step, the L-glutamate that have been formed from the previous reaction is again accepting a ammonia molecule in the presence of ATP and it is converted into glutamine. And at the final step, the glutamine can able to combine there with a molecule of alpha keta glutarate in the presence of NADPH and they can able to form two molecule of glutamate and NADP. So, the glutamate molecule which is essentially required for 
incorporating the ammonia is regenerated at the final step of this reaction. These steps have been characterized by two enzymes, namely glutamine synthase and glutamate synthase. Glutamate synthase is also referred as glutamine oxoglutarate aminotransferase. 